It's Monday once again, so let's continue with the Game of Thrones rewrite. Welcome to the newest episode of SDW. Super Dario World! It's me, Dario! Woohoo! So, I had a very, very, very busy weekend. Uh, <laughs> watched a lot of TV. Super busy. Went to the Reptile Super Show. It was great. I went down to Mexico for my dad's birthday. Got to play with my dogs. Hang out with some family members. Ate some great meat. It's phenomenal. It's a great weekend, but super busy. And uh, well, before I get into that, let me give you a quick reminder that the podcast is officially on the iHeartRadio app. You can find it. The show presents uh, Super Dario World. You can also find it on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Just type in Super, uh, Super Dire World Podcast. You'll find it right there. Any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have for me, you can always find me on Instagram at Dario the Show. And I, by the way, uh, I've thought of what my next... Uh, okay. On Friday, I did an open question thing. So pretty much ask me anything, and I answered it on the podcast. <laughs> Apparently, for some reason, people thought that I was going to answer on Instagram. No, I'm answering in the podcast. The answers are here. It's a <laughs> I guess I should have clarified... I mean, in the video, I specify that I'm going to answer the podcast, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, I've thought of what my next one's going to be. Um, it's <laughs> it's going to be, what do you think of blank? So I'm going to do that probably in two weeks because this Friday, I'm not going to do anything. So probably for next Friday, I'll do that. So if you want to think of something in the meantime, that's probably what I'm going to do. Anyway, so one of the shows that I watched is I binge watched the first season of Cobra Kai, which is phenomenal phenomenal not good not great phenomenal i love that show it's my favorite new show it's the best reboot the best new show that they've come up with in a very long time it's fantastic to me it's (laughs) i've said this to people and some of them got offended but to me it's a perfect example of how great storytelling is can uh can beat bad acting because, I mean, come on. The actors are not great. I mean, the kids are fantastic. It's They're some of the best child actors I've ever seen. Well, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. They're really good at what they do. Uh, but uh, there's a reason why Ralph Macchio and and Johnny Johnny, La- <laughs> Johnny Lawrence did not become mega stars. I mean, they're iconic in their own right for the Karate Kid. But there's a reason why they, they, they didn't become A-listers. So it it's fantastic storytelling. Fan. Fantastic, phenomenal, and it's so good that you don't care about the bad acting. <laughs> well, it's not bad. It's just not not great act, not great acting. Okay, that's that's all I'm gonna say. The acting is it's good enough. There you go. It's good enough for the Karate Kid. But the show is phenomenal. I am loving every second of it, and uh, to the point where th- there's a point where you don't really know. Like uh, the person I was watching it with, there was a point where I had to turn and say, I have no idea who I'm rooting for. I don't know who I'm rooting for. It's great. It's handled perfectly. It has so many twists and turns. I love it. Highly recommend it. Do yourself a favor. Binge watch uh, the first and second season. It's like 10 episodes each, less than 30 minutes. They're, they're, it's Yeah, it's like 25 the per episode. So highly recommend it. Highly enjoyed it. And yeah, do yourself a favor. Watch that. But okay, let's continue with the Game of Thrones rewrite. All right, so I'm going to keep this one super quick because I have to leave for a meeting that I, I didn't forget, but it's just the day caught up with me. I had a lot of stuff to do today. It was a crazy busy Monday, but okay, so quick recap. Uh, last episode was pretty much uh, Littlefinger and Varys meeting in uh, Storm's End, each one trying to get Storm's End for themselves. The one who won that, uh, that duel there was Littlefinger, and so he installed Davos and uh, Gendry as the Castellans. By the way, Davos, you, you should know who Davos is, but Gendry, he's the bastard of Robert Baratheon. And so Storm's End is the castle of the Baratheons since Stannis is dead. Uh, there's no more Baratheons. And so since since Davos was the hand of Stannis and Gendry's Robert Baratheon's bastard, Littlefinger managed to convince the, cast, the Castellan of Storm's End to give it up to those two. So the new Castellans of Storm's End are Davos and Gendry. Uh, mainly Gendry, but the the face there is going to be Davos because that's who Cersei knows. And it's going to be a piece for the Lannister army right now. It was 
traded in exchange for being able to to go to Dragonstone for the Norse to go to Dragonstone and get some dragon glass. So that's pretty much how that worked out, right? So now uh, Littlefinger has has the the piece uh, Storm's End, and Varys has realized that holy shit, while I was away in fucking <laughs> Marine. Uh, my rival has been making a ton of moves. So he realized that he needs to step up his game because Littlefinger took up way, way more territory, way more way more space on the board than he ever expected he could. So now he knows that he has to step things up. So that's where that happened. Okay. And it's been a while since we've talked about the North. So let's talk about the North just very, very briefly because, again, don't have that much time. It's going to be a short one. So for... Last time, what I mentioned was Sansa is pretty much running Winterfell, or yeah, she's she's trying to. They need food, they need supplies. It's winter. They need to fix uh, the the burnt out parts of Winterfell. They need to reestablish who's gonna take control of which uh, of which castle of the traitors. They're trying to they're trying to give land to the Vale Lords so that they'll stay in the north and protect it. So she's trying to handle the political and. Um, what is it? What's the word? Not just political stuff, but also the day to day stuff. Trying to make sure that things, the the social economic stuff that she's trying to handle, make sure that everything runs smoothly. And she so far she's doing okay. Uh, we left Bran and John at the wall. They're in Castle Black, and they're trying to figure out kind of how to use Bran's powers to their advantage. On the way to the wall is the Brotherhood Without Banners, which is Bra- uh, Beric Dondarrion who's the guy with the flaming sword, Thoros of Mir, the guy with the flaming sword who could, who brought, who brings him back to life and the hound, as well as the, the blackfish who's Caitlin's uncle who, who had control of, of river, river run and, uh, Brienne of Tarth. When, when she's in river run, she helps the, the blackfish escape and the show, the blackfish dies here. He escapes with, uh, with Brienne of Tarth and they're, they, they go North at, and they, they go to Winterfell. So they're in Winterfell, and there the Blackfish realizes, okay, you need to start setting up an army here, lady. It's not just all that stuff. So he leaves Brienne in charge because he knows that she, she's a capable fighter and and starts wants to give her at least a little bit of a leadership role. So it's okay, stay here, train forces the same way that you're training, Pod. I will go up to the wall to see my, my stupid, <laughs> the stupid Jon Snow, see what the hell he's doing over there. And see if I can be of use to him. Because if what you're saying is true, then I should be up there. And also, if I'm all the way up there, then it's way harder for anybody else to... For, for it, it means that I won't be uh, a danger to you here. Because technically, the Blackfish is a traitor to the Lannisters. And so the Lannisters, if they wanted to hunt him down or something, they could demand him from Sansa. Especially since now they have like a peace thing. But if he's at the wall, nobody's really going to care. Or they shouldn't even know. So he goes to the wall. So, you got uh, the Blackfish and the Scouts, because uh, the Blackfish is the commander of Scouts. He's a great Scout, and he's a great leader. So, you got a seasoned veteran Scout and his, his best Scouts on the way to the Wall, as well as the Brotherhood Without Banners and the Hound. Now, jon has got his Wildlings and the Night's Watch there at the Wall and Bran. And they're trying to figure out piece together from all the intel that they've gotten from all the all the Night's Watch and a few of the of the wildlings of a few like brief rangings that they've done, like where the hell are they? What's the best place to look? Now at the same time, Bran is trying to figure out his own powers and of uh, the powers of the Three Eyed Raven, and he's trying to kind of make John embrace his warg side because Bran can clearly see that that John's a warg by the fact that Bran cannot warg. In, by the way, wargs are. Uh, do you remember th- there was a character in the show could who could go into an eagle, right? But yeah, I, I forget Lauren. I don't I don't remember his name. But dude could go into an eagle. Pretty much same thing. That's called warging. When a person goes into an animal, Bran used to do it all the time with Summer. He he went into Summer and he could see through his eyes and 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 move him. So he took control of him. That's called warging. Now, Bran has re- realizes that John is a warg because he can't warg into into ghost ghost and and john are so telepathic their their telepathic link is so strong that not even bran can break it so he's trying to make john embrace that side because it's, it makes him a it's a valuable weapon that he could use so um 
Bran is one one's trying to convince the other of doing different things. Bran realizes that a war creature cannot cross the wall. So he tries to make uh one of the uh, he he wargs into a raven and tries to cross the wall but he can't. Uh, he realizes it's like it's like they're hitting a wall even if it's air it's like they're hitting an air over the wall because the wall was built by more than just ice it was also built by really strong spells so uh bran realizes that if he's on the other side of the wall then he can control whatever uh, the the thing is that they just can't cross so bran has been crossing the wall and with with ravens in cages then they let him loose and then he goes into the ravens and he starts warging, right? That's pretty much how he's been doing it. However, Bran realizes that he feels weaker than he did when uh, when he was with the three-eyed raven. And the reason why he starts thinking is, okay, maybe it's because I was right next to a werewood. Because for those of you who don't know, the three-eyed raven, the original one, the old guy with the children of the forest, they were right under uh, a tree, The one of the... the White trees? Oh, I forget the name. The werewood trees. One of the werewood trees. And so they, he starts to think, okay, it was all connected as part of the werewood net. So it's possible that if I'm closer to one of these trees, my powers will get enhanced and I will be able to connect with other areas that have other werewoods. So theoretically, he would be able to see into Winterfell because Winterfell has a werewood. He could, well, he could see several spots. And his powers would basically be magnified. It's like a giant antenna. So he 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 decides to take a journey with. For those of you who don't remember, back in season one, the the nearest werewood to the Night's Watch is beyond the wall. That's where Jon Snow took his vows, and Sam joined him. So that that's where they go. So Mira, who by the way, Mira is still here. Bran doesn't just Mira. Uh, Mira Reed, who if you guys remember when when Bran went. Uh, went to the north. He, he went with Hodor, Summer, and Jojen and Mira Reed. Now Jojen dies, and Mira, when they come back to Winterfell, he basically says, "Shoo, bitch." <laughs> Here, that wouldn't happen. He'd still be cool with her. He'd still have like that little crush, and she'd still be there protecting him. So, him and along with a few of the wildlings, they go beyond the wall and they try to test out his powers. Now, as this is the first time that he connects to the werewood and actually tries to expand as far as he can. Before, he was kind of trying to, to control it. Now, he's trying to expand and see how far he can go. And he senses something odd. He's not sure what it is, but he senses like something like really like really hot. And, and it's weird. He doesn't exactly know what it is. But he knows for sure it's not the... It's not the the Night King, because the Night King, when he when he feels the Night King, it's kind of cold. But it, but he gets a sense of where where to start looking. So they he begins kind of searching with his ravens in that direction, trying to find the the Night King. In the meantime, in Castle Black, John is trying to organize his party the best he can, trying to figure out okay, how many people do we have? How many people do we need? Is it better to send more? Or is it better to just send a few? And the Veil vale Lords. Oh, by the way, because remember. The Vale Lords sent some of their their most trusted soldiers along with Jon Snow so that they could see. The the thing is, they just want to see the army of the dead, and if they see it, they'll come back and they'll report to the Vale Lords. Hey, yeah, dude, it's true, it's it's real. And so that was kind of the deal, because bringing back a zombie, stupid, right? Having somebody who you trust, like imagine the person you trust most in the world, or something somebody who you know is uh, an honest person. Sending him and being like that person saying like, dude, zombies are real. Like, are you messing with me? No, no, no. Zombies are real. Are you sure? Yes, dude. I saw them with my own eyes. I would not lie to you. Zombies are real. We need to deal with this. You'd be like, okay, we. All right, I believe you. It's better than having the. It's better than having to go yourself and seeing a zombie, right? You, you try. You tend to believe that person. So that's who you would send. Anyway, those are. They're trying to figure out: is it just better to bring a small party, a bigger one? They're trying to figure out all the logistics and that starts bringing up other issues like food the more people that come up to castle black sure more people that they could defend or used to to defend the wall and all that stuff but they're having issues with food which builds up tensions and Jon snow remembers that the last time that tensions were building up at castle black he got stabbed and it was one of the big reasons was food a food shortage so tensions are high in castle black but overall everybody kind of follows john because again John is not Pussy John that he was on the show. He's 
kind of a bit more on the rougher side because, you know, after they murder you, you tend to just not be as nice anymore. So the Brotherhood Without Banners arrives at the wall and uh, it's not very pleasant because the from the reputation that everybody has of the Brotherhood, of the Brotherhood Without Banners, it's a bunch of rebels. Uh, the Blackfish shows up with his troops and while they, they like to the help, they're like, ah oh, man, it's a whole bunch of rebels. And Jon Snow's his basic thing now is, I do not give a fuck. We need help. All right? So we need to figure out, A, how to feed these people, and B, well, well first off, A, how to find the enemy of the dead, B, how to feed these people. So he starts reaching out to other the other castles of the Night's Watch, see if they can bring something by sea. Well, I mean, get food, import it by sea, and then and then send some of the like the scouts from from the Blackfish to go and bring the food back and forth to you know guard the guard stuff. So he's giving everybody pretty much busy work while they figure out how they're going to move um, and stuff like that. So so he's trying to keep everybody as far away from the castle until they're needed and try to go and collect food pretty much. That's what because that's what they need. So they'll be doing something and they won't be there just eating everything that they have and causing all the tensions that brought brought him, you know, his death. So what what we can see is that John's starting to learn from his past mistakes, right? Also, he's not as big a bitch anymore. So this ep- the this segment would end with when Bran returns from from his from his kind of like scouting mission, he kind of has a pretty they well a pretty clear not a pretty clear but a better idea of where they are they are closer to near the area of hard home closer to what would be the east side of the continent so instead right now they're like in the middle so they'll probably have to go to east watch by the sea and and go away from there and also Bran says that he felt something in kind of like weird becoming from the south like a really weird energy from the south and from the east. And that's when ravens arrive and they mention the arrival of Daenerys Targaryen and her dragons. So this is the first time that Bran has heard that dragons have returned to the world and that gives him an idea. So that's where I'm going to stop for today. That's where I'm going to stop this particular ep- episode. Uh, it's almost eh, 15 minutes is fine. It's, I gave you, uh, it was a little bit longer than I expected, but okay, that's it for today. Um, uh, tomorrow I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do but I'll probably just do another Super Dario news like I said this is a weird week I won't be doing episodes every single day because of Comic Con I got a lot to do I got a lot to do but that's it for today uh, as always any comments questions or suggestions you can find me at Dario the Show on Instagram thank you for listening and I'll see you again tomorrow 